hi and welcome to my channel in today's video we are going to be making this beautiful kimono dress with flare sleeves it is a very very simple tutorial i show you how to make the kimono dress itself how to make the flare sleeves how to make your belt and how to you know fix in your belt loops so if you are new here if this is your first time on this channel welcome please click the subscribe button and click the bell so that whenever i post new videos you are going to be the first to know and now let's get right into the tutorial so guys here is my fabric i have my fabric folded into two first then i went ahead to fold it again the reason why i have it folded twice is because i'm going to be cutting the front and the back at the same time okay so i have the entire folded part now around 13 inches so i have 13 inches here my hip divided by four is 10 points Two five, so I decided to add some extra allowances because kimono blouse is not usually fitted, is a little bit free. So what I'm going to do next is to draw a top line at the top right here. I'm going to leave a little bit of space because we're going to be adding seam allowance on the fabric. So I'm going to leave just this much. So this is what I have. What I'm going to do next is to go on to input my shoulder measurement. So my shoulder measurement is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8 inches, right? So I'll come right here, mark 8 inches. What I'm going to do is to add an extra half inch because I want the shoulder part of this kimono blouse to drop a little bit. So I'm going to add extra half inch, which will make this what? 8 and half inches. What I'm going to do now is to add half an inch seam allowance here. The total measurement that I have here is what? It's going to become 9 inches. 8 inches is my original shoulder measurement divided by 2, 16 divided by 2, 8. I added half an inch because I want to drop the shoulder down a bit. And then I added another half an inch for seam allowance. Do you understand? So from this horizontal line that I drew, I'm going to go ahead and mark my armhole depth. And for me, it is 9 inches. So I'm going to drop that armhole depth again by another half inch. So this would make it 9 and half. So I come right here, I mark nine and a half okay on this same line i'll just come to another point mark nine and a half so that we can end up with a straight line do you understand so i'll come right here and draw a straight line like this now remember that i marked nine inches in total at the top here it is inclusive of seam allowance i'm also going to come right here and mark that nine inches so that nine inches that i marked i'll connect it from here now to this point at the top so we can have a straight line and then we can draft our armhole. So once that is done, we need to mark our bust circumference. Now, for this kimono blouse, I'm not going to be going with my bust circumference. I'll be using my hip as reference because we want it to be sort of big. My hip is 41. 41 divided by 4 is 10.25. So I'm going to come right here on this line that we marked. I hope you guys can see that line. I'm going to mark 10.25, okay? I'm going to come right after where I marked the 10.25. I'm going to mark an extra 2 inches, okay? Then I'll add half an inch for seam allowance at the side. Do you understand my explanation? What I'm marking at this bust area is my hip divided by 4 plus 2 inches. Do you understand? And then I added half an inch seam allowance to that as well what i'm going to do is come right to this my armhole depth i'm going to divide nine and a half into two and this is going to give me 4.75 do you understand then i'll go ahead and curve this out from that armhole divided by two that i did i just went ahead to curve it out to the bust measurement or whatever we marked at this bust line after carving out the armhole parts, what I'm going to do next is to come to the top line. I'm going to be going with a neck width of 3 inches, okay? So I come right here, mark 3 inches. Come at the armhole line. I'm going to be marking 1 inch downward for my shoulder slant. And then I'll go ahead and connect from that 3 inches to this 1 inch downwards to create the shoulder slope, okay? So I'll just go ahead and connect it like this. So did you see that? after drawing up this shoulder slope i'm going to go ahead and add half an inch seam allowance at the top okay i'm going to add half an inch seam allowance 
at the shoulder slope here. I've not marked my neckline yet. The reason being that I want to finish up with the entire dress before marking out the neckline. So I just decided to add this half an inch seam allowance at the top. At this part where we are going to mark the neckline and my shoulder slant. We are going to come right back and mark our neckline. But you need to be careful because your fabric is folded to cut out both front and back at the same time. So that's why I said we're going to come back to it. Meanwhile, we have added seam allowances for our armhole already. If you remember, while I was calculating the shoulder measurement, while I was calculating the bust measurement, I added extra half inch here. I added extra half inch here, okay? So that covers for the seam allowance at the armhole. Do you understand? So what I'm going to do next is to mark the length of this kimono. So it depends on what you are going for. Are you going for something long? Are you going for something short? That is definitely up to you. But as for me, I'll be going with a length of 35 inches. So from the top line right here, not from the seam allowance at the top, from the top line, I'm going to be marking that length. Now, this screen cannot show us the length that I'm marking. So I'm going to do this in bits, okay? So I'm going to come right here now. I'm going to mark 20 inches first. Come at another point. At that top line mark 20 inches do you understand so once I mark that 20 inches I'll go ahead and fold my fabric up a bit so that we can mark the rest so from where I mark that 20 inches I'm going to mark an additional 15 inches remember I said I'm going with 35 inches so I'll come right here mark 15 inches and I'll be adding seam allowance of 2 inches so this will make it 17 inches do you understand then I'll come right where I marked the 20 inches again. I'm going to mark 15 inches. Then I'm going to add another 2 inches, making that what? 17 inches. And what I'm going to do next is to go ahead and join the bottom to have a straight line. So the next thing I'm going to do is, whatever I marked right at this bust line, I'm going to go ahead and measure that. I have 12.75. That same measurement is what I'm going to mark at the bottom. Okay, so we are going to end up with a box-like shape. Do you understand? So after marking the 12.75 right here at the bottom, I'm going to be connecting it straight up to the 12.75 I have marked at the bust line here. We're going to be ending up with a box-like shape. So I'll just go ahead and connect those points. So now that we are all done with the body of this kimono, I'm going to come right to the neckline now. I'll be going with a neck depth of one inch for the back. Now, because the back is so high up, we need to cut out the back first before making any adjustments to the front. So I'm going to come right here from the seam allowance line. They have an inch seam allowance line that I mark above that top line. I'm going to mark that one inch. Do you understand? So I'll go ahead and curve this now all the way to the neck width. So once you, once you have created your neckline, we are going to go ahead and cut this out following the markings that we have made, okay? So after cutting, this is what we have. We now have, you know, both front and back pieces cut out like this okay so the next thing i'm going to do is to go ahead and remove the back piece so after removing the back piece we're going to come right here and adjust the neckline of the front piece okay i'll be going with sort of like a v necked shape okay so it's going to come like this you know and then go straight down remember that you've removed one inch from this already so i'm going to place my table in such a way that i have one inch off let's say i want to go with a v of about 12 inches i'll just come right here mark that 12 inches from the curve of where the neck width is or where the neckline begins i'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line like this so this is what i have the next thing i'm going to do is to trim this off like this all the way down So at the point where the v-neck stopped, I'm going to divide our front now into two. Just like this, okay? Once we are done, 
we have our two front pieces. So what I'm going to do now is to join the shoulder pieces of this kimono together. I'm going to get my back piece now, open it up. I'll be placing the front on top of it, right sides touching, just like this. Place it right sides touching. I'm going to take this to my sewing machine now. I'll be joining the shoulder seams by a half an inch seam allowance. Join the side seam as well by a half an inch seam allowance. After sewing up the shoulder seams and the side seams, I went ahead to overlock the raw edges with a zigzag stitch and I pressed the seams open. The next I'm going to do is to work on the sleeve of this kimono that we are making. So I'm going to grab my basic long sleeve pattern. I have a tutorial on how to have this drafted. I'll link it up in my description box. Okay. I have about one and a quarter yard of Ankara fabric left after creating the bodies of this kimono. So what I did was to fold the fabric into two and then I folded it into two again. I have a double fold going on here because I want to cut the two sleeves at the same time. Okay. So right here is the open part of the sleeve. This is where we are going to have the seam of the sleeve, the side seam of the sleeve. And right here will be the center, sort of like the center of the sleeve. Okay. So I'm going to place my sleeve pattern right on top like this since there are basically no changes to the armhole i'm just going to use the back part of the sleeve head to cut everything out so the next thing i'm going to do is to draw a straight line at the bottom following the bottom of the sleeve pattern that i have here so i'll just go on to do this okay once this is done i'll come right here now at this sleeve head i'm going to connect it all the way to the bottom that we have here. Then I'll also trace out my sleeve head like this. So this sleeve has seam allowance all around. So I will not bother adding extra seam allowance to this. So before I go ahead and cut, I'm going to have to shape in the bottom. So because this is, you know, sort of flare, I don't want the center of the sleeve to be, you know, shorter. So you can go on to measure how long the slant is, so I have about 19.75 inches from where I started the slant, which is about half an inch above this line. So I'll come right here, place half an inch above that line, and I'm going to be measuring 19.75 inches. So my 19.75 inches ends somewhere around this point. So I'll just go ahead and mark it. So can you see what I'm doing? So that they are sort of like the same length. And from here, I'm going to curve it all the way to the slanted line okay so just go ahead and do like a slight curve to help shape out the bottom of your sleeve so if you want really really massive flare sleeve all you need to do is to use more fabric repeat the same thing that we just did here and go on to cut your fabric out okay So after cutting guys, this is what I have for my sleeve. The next thing I'm going to do is to make a slight adjustment to the sleeve head. We're going to have to make this longer because the armhole of the kimono body of the body of the kimono is sort of, you know, wider. So I just got my kimono body now. I'm going to go on to measure the armhole that I have here. So it is folded into two already. I just need to measure one part. So I come right here. I measure and I have 10 inches. So 10 times two, that is 20, right? And this 20 inches is minus the seam allowance. I've already sewn the seam allowance, okay? So I'm going to come right here, measure the sleeve head just like this. And I have about 9.5 inches. So I'm going to have to make this longer till I get about 10.5 inches because we have seam allowance. So I just place my tape rule now. Can you see what I'm doing? I said I'm going to 10 and a half, right? So my 10 and a half ends roughly around this point. So what I'm going to do is mark that point, And then I'm going to deepen the curve that I have here like this. So did you see? So my sleeve head is now running all the way to this point. What I'm going to do now is remeasure again because we have to be certain that we have 10 and a half right there. 
So can you see, I have 10 and a half. So now that we have done the sleeve adjustments, I'll just go on to cut this out. So this is what I have. Then I'm going to separate the two of them now. So by a half an inch seam allowance, I'm going to hem the bottom as well. So I've sewn the seam of the sleeves. I've hemmed the bottom, like I said. I've pressed everything down. What I'm going to do is to get the body of the kimono and we're going to be fixing in the sleeve. So the first thing I'm going to do is to notch the sleeve head. That's the center of the sleeve head because we're going to be aligning it with our shoulder seam. So I'm going to place where I notched at the seam of the shoulder around the armhole area. I'll just place them on top of each other like this with right sides touching. And then I'm going to pin it down. So I'll grab the seam of the sleeve. I'm going to match that to the side seam of the kimono like this. And then I'll pin it down as well. Pinning it down helps for, you know, easier sewing and it ensures that the seam matches. So I'll take this to my sewing machine now and start sewing from the sleeve head all the way to the side seam where we have the seam of both sleeve and kimono. I'll do the same thing for the other side as well. Start from the sleeve head and sew all the way down to this part. And once I finish with this one sleeve, whatever I've done here, I'll repeat the same thing for the other sleeve and sew it up together. So after sewing the sleeve to the body of the kimono, this is what I have. The next thing we're going to do is to come right to the center front of the kimono. We are going to be measuring from the bottom here all the way to the other end. Okay, so I've started doing that already. So I'll just keep going. We need to know the length of what we are measuring in order to continue with the next part of this tutorial. So I'm just going to continue measuring like that till I get to the other end. So I have 60 right here. I place my tape rule at that point and then I'm going to continue. So 60 plus 24.5, because I have about 24.5 here, that is 84.5. So what I'm going to do is cut a strip of fabric measuring 84.5. The length will be 84.5. The width is going to be four inches. So I've made my strip of fabric. I had to do some joining to get the fabric to that 84.5 inch length. And this is it right here. I said that the width was four inches, right? We're going to be folding this to 1.5. So I have about four inches in width. I'm going to have half an inch seam allowance here and half an inch seam allowance here. So by the time we close everything up, it will come to 1.5 inches. Do you understand? So I grab my kimono now. I have the center back of the kimono notched, okay? I'm going to be matching the notch that I have at the center back to the center seam of this strip here. And I'm placing right side of the strip to wrong side of the kimono dress. Do you understand? So I just go ahead and match it and then I pin down. So what I'm going to do is take this to my sewing machine now. From that center back, I'm going to be joining the kimono and the strip together by a half an inch seam allowance till I get to the bottom. Then I'll do the same thing for the other side. So from the center back all the way down. So guys, after sewing it up, I'll go on to notch the back neckline because it is a curved part of this, our garment. So I'm going to notch it so that it can sit really well by the time we, you know, fold this over. So what I'm going to do next is to conceal these raw edges. So since I have pressed my fabric, that's the fabric strip to the middle, I just fold it over by that crease that the fabric has formed. And I have my half inch seam allowance here folded. So I just use that to cover up the raw edges. And then I'll take this to my sewing machine. I'll be stitching very, very close to the edge all around this fabric okay start from center back all the way to the bottom start from center back all the way to the other bottom so guys after sewing this part onto it 
this is what it looks like by the time we are done okay so can you see this extra fabric right here so the next thing i'm going to do is to hem the bottom of the blouse i have two inches at the bottom okay so i went on to fold the bottom of the fabric by that two inches i pressed it down and then i went on to fold half an inch inwards like this okay and i pressed it down as well so i'll fold it like this take it to my sewing machine and then i'll be sewing the bottom of this kimono very very close to the edge of the fold so guys after hemming the bottom this is what i have we need to create a belt in order to hold this um, kimono together when we wear it okay so we'll be making a belt we'll be making belt holders for this kimono so I cut my fabric strip for the belt piece already. So if you want to cut a belt for yourself, I would advise that you go with your waist circumference by two to get the length of your belt. So let's say your waist circumference is 34, 34 times two, that will give us 68 inches. Add an extra one inch to that, making that what 69. That one inch will serve as half an inch seam allowance at both ends of your belt. Do you understand? Your waist circumference times two is not standard, okay? You can definitely go more than that. I won't advise that you go less than double your waist circumference. So what I have here is definitely more than double my waist circumference because I wanted this belt to be a little longer. So the belt strip is folded into two already. And what I have here is 35 inches. 35 times two is 70 inches. And my waist is 32, 32 times so that's 64 inches so this is more than that and i'm satisfied with this okay so the width of this belt strip is measuring four inches by the time we sew half an inch together we are going to end up with 1.5 inches on fold so i fold it into two like this i'll sew by half an inch and this would make me end up with 1.5 inches of my belt on fold do you understand so i'm going to take this to my sewing machine now sew the entire length of this belt strip by a half an inch so after sewing the belt, this is what I have. I went on to press the seam open and to the center. Okay, I didn't want the seam to be at the edge. So I pressed it to the center. After pressing it to the center, I went on to sew the top by a half an inch seam allowance. So I'll just use my scissors to push this belt piece now right sides out. Once I have this part showing, I remove the scissors and pull everything through. So I'm going to use a dressmaker pin to just, you know, bring out the edge at this point since I've removed my scissors. So once everything is poked out nice and neat, I'm going to come right here at the other edge. In order for me to seal this in, I just fold it by a half an inch seam allowance, just like this. And then I'm going to do a top stitch right at the edge of this belt. And I'm going to press this down so that it looks really, really neat. Okay. Here is my belt all done. What we are going to do next is to make the belt holders or belt loops. And we need to know where we are going to place it. So we're going to be placing this belt loop on the waist. So I'm going to get my tape roll now mark my shoulder to waist and for me my shoulder to waist is 16 inches okay so i come right here i mark 16 inches i'm going to get my ruler now place it on the mark that i've done here so can you see what i'm doing and then i'm just going to mark the point at the side seam do you understand so at that 16 inch mark, I'm going to mark one inch above and one inch below. So this one inch above and one inch below that I'm marking is where we are going to be attaching the beginning and the end of the belt loop. Do you understand? So I'll come right here and do the same thing for this other side. I'm going to mark 16 inches from my shoulder. So from here, I'm marking 16 inches that is where my shoulder seam is before it slopes downwards so from here i'm going to mark 16 inches like that okay then i use my ruler so i can get another point at the side seam i mark that then i go on to mark one inch above that mark and one inch below 
because that's where we'll be attaching the belt holders. So what I'm going to do now is get some strip of fabric that I have cut out. This strip of fabric is measuring three and a half inches by 1.5 inches, okay? And I have two. Each one will go to the side same way I have made those marks. So what I did here was to fold it by a quarter inch, fold it by another quarter inch, and I'll use that to close this up like this. Take this to my sewing machine, stitch the edge here, and then I'll also do like a top stitch on this folded part. I'll repeat the same thing for this one as well. So I'm done stitching. What I've also done was to loosen up the seam around where I made those marks. So I'm going to insert one end through this part. I'm going to just pin it down to hold it in place, okay? So once I pin that down, I will grab this other end, put it in here, pin it down, okay? So I'll take this to my sewing machine now and stitch it. I'll stitch it down on the inside. So I pushed the belt holder in by a half an inch. So I'm going to sew it down and then I'll repeat the same thing for this other side, okay? So after sewing the belt holder, guys, this is it right here. We are done done. So I'm going to insert my belt through the belt holders like this. And that is it for our kimono tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, kindly give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, turn on the bell so you get updates when I post new videos and I'll be seeing you in my next tutorial. Bye guys.